Hi everyone, this is Dr. Keith. I'm going to walk you through some of the data mining tools found in the plugin for Excel for SQL Server Analysis Services that, um, well, some of you have installed and some of you are probably using in the 240 computer lab. If you happen to be in the lab and you're following along with these videos, make sure that the computer you've logged into, you logged in using this special username right here. You need this dot slash SQL space user, and the password is analysis101. The purpose is that you have to be an administrator or logged into an administrator account when you run this software. So, uh, if you're in the lab again, uh, make sure you've logged in with those credentials. The dot slash simply tells uh, the computer to back out of any uh, domain account that it might currently be trying to log you into and try to log in on the local computer account. Okay, so. I want you to download the, so or the uh, Excel file posted by your instructor, which is likely found on the first or second day of the BI class. It's the same file that gets installed when you install the uh, SQL Server uh, plugin um, for Excel. And it's this DM add-ins uh, database file. Let me adjust the screen size here so you can see it. All right. And it should look like this. If you uh, are working on your own laptop, your own computer, and you installed uh, all the software like you should, and you don't have access to this file, simply, uh, I I'm on Windows 8, so actually I won't move that. I'm going to go to my tile screen, and then I'm going to just type in and search for sample Excel data. And so when you search for sample Excel data, you probably can't see it now in this video, but an Excel file will pop up and that's what you want to open. Okay, so you should have this file. Click Enable Editing. And in this video, this first one, I'm simply going to show you some of the clean data tools. So first of all, select the tab that has the data in it, this Table Analysis Tool Sample, and notice that I must have an Excel table selected. So see how I get Table Tools and Analyze and Design pops up. And as soon as I click off the table, that that context-sensitive uh, menu leaves. I click on it, I get it again. So we're not using, well actually, sometimes we use this data mining tab and sometimes we use this analyze tab. But either way, I want to have the table, my cursor, somewhere in the table uh, that we're going to be analyzing. So for this video, we're going to click on the data mining tab and we want to explore and clean the data. So start by simply clicking explore data. Now, make sure that you wait a second. If you click, wait for this to pop up. Sometimes if you're on a slow machine, those lab machines, it takes a minute for this window to pop up. If you click Explore Data, and it hasn't popped up yet, and then you click another button again, it's going to break the plugin, and you're going to have to restart Excel. All right, let's click Next. And it says, which table do you want to explore the data? Yep, this is the one we have selected. That's why we want to have our cursor in the table when we run the analysis, so it'll auto automatically or auto-populate this field right here. We click Next, and it says, OK, pick one of the columns to analyze. Let's start by analyzing children. Children's a numeric column, which uh, is different from an unordered historical uh, <coughs> column. So I click Next, and it's simply going to give me a, a chart to show me the distribution of, of, this, of this variable. Why is this important? Why do we care? Well, if you get further into data mining, uh, which I hope you do at some point, there are some rules that uh, many of these analyses need to follow. For example, one of the rules is our data should be normally distributed, meaning that this graph should look like uh, a bell curve, which it doesn't exactly right now. For this uh, case, uh, we're not going to worry too much more about it. The purpose of this explore data is just simply to do just that find out which of our variables uh, may potentially lead to problems. Okay, bachelor's, uh, or sorry, education, it's a categorical field. Uh, however, it is ordered, meaning that high school is uh, less education than partial college, which is less than bachelor's, which is less than uh, master's or graduate degree. So we'd like to see some type of normal distribution. Now look, it didn't order these. Uh, Excel doesn't know the order of these uh, categories. It simply says, okay, let's graph them from highest down to lowest. 
Uh, whereas with numeric data, it, it knows and understands the order of numbers, and so it will order it um, from smallest to greatest. In this case, partial high school and graduate degree should be our two smallest categories because they represent what would be the beginning and the end of education. And then in the middle, we should have uh, something like partial college and or bachelors. So if we were to reorder these categories, uh, the education field is somewhat normal. So that's the purpose of uh, the Explore Data tool, just to give us an idea of, of what the data looks like. And notice we can also, if we're looking at numeric data, let's go to income, we can also switch back and forth between bar charts and, <coughs> oh, I see, different levels of bar charts. All right, so that's enough for now. I'm just going to simply click Finish. Let's go on to the Clean Data tool and look at both Outliers and Relabeling. So the Outliers tool is also super useful. I'm going to click Next, let it auto-detect uh, the table that I'm on. Click Next again. And this time, uh, I want to um, actually, let's stick with, let's go to American <coughs> and click next. Okay, and then I'm going to click next again. Oh, sorry, I don't like that one. Let's instead use income. Next, there we go. It says, okay, here is the distribution of income. Some of these are going to be outliers. What do you want to set as the thresholds for a minimum and maximum outliers? I can move these and say, okay, anything above 126,000 ish is going to be a high outlier and anything below uh, well look we have a ton of data there I don't think we could safely call any of this outliers because there's so many uh, data points at that level whereas back here there's just a few in fact because there's so many at this level I would probably call everything from here on out outliers so Here's uh, just a bar chart version of the same thing. Uh, but in this case, notice the bar chart. It's ordering not numerically, but in terms of which categories have the greatest down the least. So it lets us identify what we want the outliers to be and click Next. And then it'll even let me say, OK, do you want to change now to a specific limit? All right. This means I could change everything over 142,000 to 142,000. There are reasons uh, why that's useful, especially with numeric data. But I can say change to a specific value, put it in a new column so that I have income and then income modified and go back. I can also change those to a mean value, change it to null or empty, or simply delete all the records containing those outliers. This is a great quick and easy way to handle uh, outlier data. All right, one more tool I want to show you is the Relabel tool. Now, typically, you won't use this a lot because you've learned VBA. And when you get uh, data that's not been cleaned yet, you'll probably write some VBA function to go through and clean it all up. However, for those that don't understand VBA, I can come here and say, all right, uh, I've done some analyses, and I can tell that partial college is no different from high school. Therefore, to give myself a more parsimonious analysis, again, parsimonious meaning that we, uh, we want to have as simple a set of variables and a simple set of values as possible in our data mining um, to make it uh, to improve the usability of our analyses. So in order to make something more parsimonious, I might want to reduce the total number of education options. So I can click Next and say, all right, how do I want to relabel each of these? Well, from now on, partial high school is going to equal, sorry, partial college is going to equal high school and click Next, and I can decide to change it, um, add a new column to the current worksheet, copy the sheet data into a brand new worksheet, or change data in place. If I do that, there's no going back. So typically, we won't use that option. We'd rather add a new column. For example, I now have, there it is, Education 2. And all partial colleges have been relabeled to high school. Then I can use this in my analysis. OK, this is all for now. Um, Practice these tools, play with them, and then uh, uh, once you've actually done them, move on to the next video.